it's a marvellous thing to have a greenhouse. Not only is it a wonderful place to come and work, it extends the growing season, both starting things off early in spring and harvesting late into the winter. It keeps extreme weather off all the little seedlings. And it's much easier to stop birds eating all my grapes and savaging all my plants. Slugs and snails are a lot easier to control. I mean, the ducks aren't allowed in here, but it's a controlled environment and it really is the engine of the garden. And I can grow things that would be mightily difficult to grow outdoors here in the southwest of England, such as peaches, avocado trees, lemons, apricots, lemon verbena, pineapples, ginger, turmeric, aloe veras, melons, mangoes, plus lots of other tender little things that you could grow outside but are just much easier in a greenhouse, like all the herbs, parsley, basil, stevia, chilies and peppers, and things that are a little bit more needy like melons and tomatoes. There are wild ones, wild ones growing outside, but if you've got a greenhouse, <laughs> but this is a geodesic dome greenhouse. If I'd known what I was doing, it probably would have only taken two days to build. However, it's been a 12 month epic adventure. It's April now and it has taken, yeah, 12 months to replace the old dilapidated greenhouse that was here before to build this wondrous pleasure dome. On a hill, near a wood, where nobody goes, up a track, through a gate, the food forest grows, with secrets and treasures for everyone's pleasure, and Rob's discover, Rob's discovery. I'd like to say it's rodent proof too, which it probably would be if there hadn't been a family of shrews already living here when I put the plastic over. And since it's buried so deeply into the ground, I don't think any more will be moving in, but I'm not sure what to do about this shrew family. I suppose just keep spraying my seeds with peppermint oil and hoping that they won't, won't devour them in the night. made this it feels like it's a never-ending task yeah well thanks for volunteering for me <laughs> well, I actually haven't had my bill yet <laughs> Smell of fresh cut wood. <laughs> I'm not feeling all that strong today. Last one. You can make it seem like I've done all of them, even though I've only done about six. <laughs> Thank you again, Sam. All right, historic moment. All right, what's the next stage? Read the instructions. <laughs> the instructions. Oh. The picture of your garden. I know, but. Oh yeah.
to either side of the centre. Either side of the centre, yeah. Yeah, got it. Tell me to shut up when you... No, it's fine. This is going to have music over it anyway. <laughs> no, it's good, it's going well. It's definitely a two man job. Look at the strength. Yeah, no, it's the triangles in the making it very strong. I was slightly worried about this using this soft wood, but not worried at all now. I think Pythagoras would be proud. <laughs> you need 10 short and 10 longs. It is amazing. You push down on the middle, and that is not moving at all. Look. Inherent strength. Wonderful physics. <laughs> Definitely. So now we have to use six, ten six-way hubs to connect the shorts and longs together into triangles. What do we say? Bolt washer butterfly clip. Bolt washer butterfly. There we go. There we go. So when you milled these, what did you do? Yeah, so we just rounded off the edges so that when we lay the plastic over the top, there's no sharp, sharp bits that will, that will ah. potentially tear the polythene. So if we'd bought the poles from the Build With Hubs website, would they have come that way or is that... I'm like... not sure, I don't know. Mm, but this is better, isn't it, just to avoid any, yeah. any snagging? Yes, absolutely. And remind me what these are called again, these butterfly things? Wing nuts. Wing nuts, that's right. Wing nuts. Don't forget, I'll be a test later. So you think you can hang from there? I bet I perhaps won't until it's all... Up. Well, in case it gets misshapen. Yeah, well, it might, one of them might, might clip out and then it all comes crashing down. Yeah, you've got, there's a lot of strength in the structure at the hubs, but in the center, these timbers are a little bit wonky. So uh, I don't want to go hanging heavy grapevines off those then. No, I would hang it, hang it at the hubs. So when I put my little eyelets in for the vines to grow along, I want to put them at the, at the hubs where the strength is. Right, if you, um, if you could find where they, where you could buy some of those, yes, then you could, because these will be a standard thread size. If you could replace these wing nuts with eyelets. What about putting eyelets very, very near to the hubs, like at the? You could, yeah, round here would yeah. be okay. Or even round there, round the back of the hub would be mm. ideal. Good morning, Chick Chicks. You'd like some more butter, wouldn't you? Well, I'm fresh out of butter, so excuse me. And good morning to you too. And welcome back to the forest garden. It's quite different here from the last video I did on the 20th of March. That was quite bleak. And colourless. But there's so much here now. It's really bursting to life. Look at this. Mm. 
sweet cherry blossom. It's the 11th of April and I still haven't had a haircut. Now this is my greenhouse. The geese have found their way in. Hello girls. Is it nice and warm in there? I'm going to go in if that's right. I'd like to show some people. And I built it six or seven years ago from materials I found in the area. It's made from recycled polytunnel plastic that was from an old polytunnel and it's made from scaffolding poles that I just cobbled together in the quickest way I could on a short dark winter's day a long time ago. And if we just go inside It has served its purpose very well. And in the summertime, it's a tropical paradise in here. It's wonderful, but it's not gonna last forever. And I knew that. And look, it's, the roof is sagging. Pond life. <laughs> Pond life. The roof is sagging where in a hurry and in my impatience I did it all by myself and didn't pull the plastic tightly enough when burying it in the ground and this mishmash of poles is starting to get loose and come down now. I did dig this deep hole in the ground and then pile the earth up around the outside to have a kind of um, wallopini effect where the earth acts as a thermal mass, gathering the heat during the day, and then radiating it back out at night. And as a result, it's hardly ever frozen in here. It's been really good. Well, this, this um, isn't accurate at the moment, but it is time to replace it with something a little better and more professional. This was my grandparents' shower door. There was a sliding door here, but the wind blew it off a couple of years ago. Oh, sorry, duckies. My friend Sam suggested that I build a geodesic dome over the existing greenhouse hole. And he found for me on the internet a website called buildwithhubs.co.uk. And for 150 pounds, we ordered a kit which came with all the little plastic connectors and screws you needed, not the wood, although they do supply the wood, to build this. It's like an Eden Project wannabe. And it's very, very strong. Well, it will be strong when it's in position. It's a bit flimsy when it comes to moving it. And the plan today Is somehow several of us are going to lift this over the greenhouse hole just there and get it into position. I'm not sure if the plastic will be reusable yet. I may have to get some more. The taking off of the honeysuckle is quite a symbolic moment. Okay, ready? Exposed. It's exposed. <laughs> Hello, girls. <gasps> I think they were quite happy nesting in here this morning, and we've we've disturbed their their basking site. <laughs>
Yep, I definitely need better gloves. Is that the sparks that have done that? The sparks, yeah. Gosh. Pop battle, it's going to do, isn't it? Hello again. It's now several hours after the pizza and I had a little bit of cider which I shouldn't have had but we decided not to move the dome over the greenhouse hole today as it's not quite level enough so next weekend I'm going to put some posts in the ground for the dome to sit on to make it level. So in the meantime I've got to hope there's not going to be a frost to kill my lemon trees, which I think there is tonight actually. <laughs> and in the meantime, it'll be a nice playground for the geese. Hello again. It's now several weeks later since that last video clip. May is in full mm, blossoming swing and I got a little bit impatient waiting for help with the next stage of construction. Well actually I didn't ask for it, I just um yeah I, didn't, I got too busy to organize things so I'm not sure whether it's a foolish thing or not but I decided to continue construction by myself. The dome that was just here is now in position over there. So this morning, in teeny tiny steps, I've been shifting it down here, destroying all my plants in the process. I squashed a load of rhubarb, so I had to harvest that and stew it. What a shame. I can't remember if I said in the last video, but the reason we didn't move it that wonderful snowy sunny pizza day back at the beginning of April is because the ground here was too uneven. And one bright spark, I forget who it was, suggested I should level the site first. But rather than move mountains and mountains of earth, my friend John had the idea, John with the pizza oven and the angle grinder, to use these fence posts that he's kindly donated to me. Ten fence posts, one for each of the hub corners, and to level it that way. So I've been at it for three or four hours now. And it's going rather well, although I'm not used to knocking posts in. I haven't done that for a couple of years, so this thing just here is making my arms fall off. <laughs> I've done two posts so far, one there and one there. And this will be the doorway, and once these hubs are attached to the posts, I'll be able to remove this bar and make some sort of triangular doorway just here. John has also very kindly found me some brackets and drilled them to the right size so that these wing nuts attach directly on to the brackets which then attach directly to the posts holding it in place. It's another three hours until it gets dark so I'm gonna see if I can actually get this finished today. Well apart from the plastic that's another matter. I'm not quite sure what to do about that yet.
birds were over there. They came to turn it today to make hay, just on time. There's a nice five day window and it's dry, finally. What day is it today? Tuesday, yes. It's the 24th of August, but on Friday, a lovely chap called Craig came to help me to resurrect the geodesic dome. Look, it's up. Come, come on, let me see. If I were to build another one, with or without help, ideally with, I would definitely build it on a flat surface and it would be no trouble. It wouldn't have collapsed like it did earlier this year when I tried to do it by myself, stubbornly. But with help, it's up and we built a sort of, what would you call this, a raised platform, a post and joist platform because the ground is very low here. On that side, it's very high, so it's just resting flat on the earth. It really went together easily, but the, the balancing it was a difficult bit and it's screwed down. I did have a, a quote from the plastic people to make perspex triangles to cover it, which would look amazing and would probably be more durable and last longer, but the quote was four and a half thousand pounds. And I don't have four and a half thousand pounds at the moment. So I think it'll be just normal polytunnel plastics. The next stage, not today, is to dig a trench around the outside and then like with a normal polytunnel, tuck the plastic in, and stretch it over, but it's going to have to be stretched or draped in a certain shape so it doesn't have any ruffly bits or folds in it. But that's a problem for another day. But today, what I'm doing, well, because I had to cut down a lot of the trees in here to get the dome over, there were some beautiful avocado trees growing. There still are, they just cut down a lot. The lemon trees haven't suffered at all. But I did have to take this peach tree here down to the height it is now, rather than the, the 12 foot wonder tree that it was. <laughs> 12 foot wonder tree. But the grapevines have probably suffered the most. I had to savage them right back. So they're laying on the ground here. There's a, there's a lovely red seeded grape and a white grapevine over there. So today, um, I was given these. So I'm, I'm replacing some of the, the wing nuts on the hubs and these screw on directly. These are little eyelets. So I'm screwing these onto the, the hubs and I'll, I'll put wire or string on them and then I can then strap up the remnants of these savage grapevines. And hopefully this time next year, they will be flourishing and hanging with juicy grapes again. So it's about two hours before sunset. So I'll get the grapevines up this evening and then later this week work out what to do with the cover. But as long as I get it on before the winter then all the trees will survive. Again. It's already October and I underestimated how long it would take to dig a trench all the way around the outside to bury the plastic. But I need to get it done before the first frosts, which were last year, December. So if it's the same as this year, it'll be fine. But it's taken me four hours just to do this one side and I have to do the, the rest all the way around the outside here. I'm not quite sure how far that is, but it seems like a long way. The evenings are shorter now as well, so less time. I best get digging!
Hello. It's now March the 17th. Hello chickens. It's a glorious, dry, sunny and calm day. And today is the day I'm finally... Alright, alright. I'm finally going to get the plastic cover on the dome. Here I go. really heavy. Just as well there's loads of mud for me to slide it through. It was someone's clever idea, not mine, I just remembered it, to use this button method to attach the rope to the plastic. Rather than making holes in it, it would almost certainly tear. But by getting a nice flat rock and bunching up the plastic around it and then tying the rope, we can use this, or if I have used this, to pull the plastic over the whole dome without tearing it. Although that rock did take a bit of poking up over the rafters when it got stuck, but with a long enough stick, Two of us got the plastic over absolutely fine. So yeah, two of us and a stick, but it's not over yet. Now we have to put tension on the plastic, or one of us has to put tension on it, whilst the other one backfills the square trench to lock it in. And we need to put that door back in place to hold it in tight around the door frame. So, part one complete. Part two, hmm, getting a bit hungry, maybe after lunch. Yeah. It's a bit dark to do anymore now, so I'll finish filling in the trenches tomorrow. Looks good though, doesn't it? Domey. <laughs> and there you have it. It's a marvellous thing to have a greenhouse. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and see you soon. Bye bye. Ha ha ha!